Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial on creating machines using physics constraints. Uh, in the last tutorial, what we did is we created this cool looking piston here. You can see it just uh, working its magic. And uh, the way we did that was with a few uh, hinge constraints. I was kind of jumping around, maybe we want to put in the by frame mode there. We used a few hinge constraints and a slider constraint just to create our uh, simple piston. And uh, basically, that's the simplest machine you can possibly get. One of the simplest machines you can possibly get being driven by this gear right here. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, we're going to get into a bit more advanced stuff and we're going to be going to this uh, project over here in your projects tab in the physics constraint folder. We have this project called horse toy. So I'm just going to load this up right now and take a quick look at that. Uh, I'm going to go to the scene tab first here and delete the image layer stuff since we don't really need that on our screen at all. The information object, we can delete that as well. Let's take a look at this uh, horse. Um, just as a preface, again, this is going to be a bit more of an advanced tutorial. Um, if you're not familiar with physics constraints or anything like that, I'd recommend checking out uh, the first couple tutorials since we're going to be going a little bit fast on this one. So we're going to basically be creating this horse that's uh, you know driven by this gear at the bottom there. So let's try and recreate that uh, as fast as we can here. And to do that, we're going to use some uh, basic 3D blocks. So again, we're going to go to Content, into the Props, and template and 3D blocks and I'm going to add in a cylinder like we did in the first tutorial to create our uh, driving gear there. Let's just uh, use the R hotkey to scale it down a little bit and then I'm going to rotate it to about uh, 90 degrees on the x-axis there and we'll move it to the side here so we can use this as a reference. So again we need to create our, uh, our our running gear uh, first of all and that's quite simple to do uh, with our object selected go to the physics tab activate the physics and add a constraint we'll add a hinge constraint directly to the middle and we need to make sure that's aligned to the middle of our sphere on the X in this case the Z axis and there we go so that looks pretty much smack dab in the middle and we decided to free as well for the limits and we need to give it an active uh, force, initial force. So activate, and I'm going to select a negative 5 for the velocity since we want it to go uh, counterclockwise, or rather clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. So let's play that back and you can see now we have our spinning wheel. So part one, success. Now what we need to do is we need to get uh, one of these poles in action. So let's go ahead and add in a box and create our first pole. So uh, box 001, that should be fine. And let's rename these things just to keep everything consistent. So I'm going to select this uh, um, object right here. We're going to call that one uh, gear. Uh, yeah, gear would be fine. And then for our first box right here, we're going to call this one central shaft. Okay. And we'll just uh, make it a little bit smaller here. We're going to scale it down quite a bit. And then scale it up on our uh, z-axis. So we want a decent sized uh, pole right here to kind of um, reach from one section of the gear to the body of the horse. And then let's go ahead and align this pole. Uh, I think that should be good right there. Align the pole to our gear on the X and the Z and the Y axes. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the original here. You can see that the origin of the uh, shaft right here is kind of a little bit up and a little bit right of the uh, original constraint. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put it into place. Uh, w hotkey and just move it up a little bit. I'm actually going to change the color of this uh, just to kind of differentiate it from the uh, gear. So let's just go to our diffuse color and change it to like a nice red. There we go. Now you can see it a little bit better. And let's make sure our origin point is very similar to where we had before uh, in the in the uh, example here. And notice that the uh, it's so, sort of tilted at about a 75, 80 degree angle. Uh, to the left, and let's go ahead and do, copy that as well. Let's uh, use the E hotkey and rotate it. It's about uh, that looks good. And then we need to create a body. But before we do that, let's make sure this is constrained properly. And to do that, we need to add a, a hinge constraint to the bottom part right here. Let's just uh, click and drag a hinge constraint onto our surface right here, and make sure that's reasonably centered at the bottom of my uh, uh, pole right there. And right there, we want to make sure that it is actually targeting the wheel, the gear. 
And the reason for that is because we want it to follow along. If we don't, it'll just kind of flop around like this. And then again, we also need to make sure the limit is set to free. And then we go up here to target, pick target, and let's pick the gear. Now we'll have a result like this. Uh, but of course, we still need to do a couple more things. We need to create, ooh, it's kind of hypnotizing. We need to create a body for our horse. And notice, uh, before we uh, get to the body though, notice we have a couple of constraints on this uh, central shaft here, right here. This one is here is called connect01. Notice that we have a couple of constraints. And if we go to our uh, physics tab and we select the constraint manager, we can see that this has three constraints. It has a generic constraint right here at the top, it has a slider constraint right here, and it has the hinge constraint, which we just added. Now, all of these constraints, you can tell by their red color that they are targeting other objects. So let's get into that. Uh, first of all, we'll deal with the generic constraint. Uh, so let's go out of our constraint manager there. And let's create our horse body. So I'm going to go and create another box. We're going to create a white horse. And uh, simply because the 3D primitives, the blocks, are a white color. Uh, no other reason. So let's go ahead and uh, make, the, make the body a little bit longer and stretch it down a little bit. And I think that should be long enough. We don't want to make this guy too chubby. And then let's align it to our uh, pole right here. X, Y, and Z. And let's just bring it up on the axis. And we want to make it perpendicular to the uh, central shaft there. Uh, so that would be about good. I'm just eyeballing this here. And then what I want to do is make sure that we constrain the shaft here to the body. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use my generic constraint. Let's just bring in a generic constraint right here. And we can just place it at the intersection of these two uh, objects. And in the generic constraint, notice that uh, there is absolutely no movement. All the axes are locked. So we have absolutely no movement allowed. And we want to target the uh, box right here. So we select pick target and the box. Nothing happens because we actually need to select the box and give it some active physics first in the physics tab. So we'll go to activate physics, then go back and select our constraint. You can actually go into the scene here. Uh, oh, we had it selected. Okay. Select the constraint and pick the target and the box. So now you can see the parent is a central shaft. The target is the box. And we're going to change this box name, this box 001. Let's change this to uh, body, just to keep things uh, a little bit clearer for those who may, may get lost in the mix of all these boxes and everything like that. All right, so now what we have is we're going to have sort of a sledgehammer type deal. Um, you can see this, the box just kind of uh, swinging around like that. And uh, what I want to do is constrain that with a slider. So let's go ahead now and add a slider constraint to the central shaft as well. Now the most complicated constraints uh, in this project are in the in, in the central shaft, so uh, we'll get through that first. Let's just go ahead and add this slider control, or slider constraint rather, onto the central shaft. And you can see if we add it that way, it's facing the wrong direction, which can easily be remedied if we just rotate it uh, 90 degrees on the x-axis, I believe, or on the y-axis, let's try 90 degrees. There we go. Okay, so it's just uh, going up and down here now. And that's what we want. If I press play now, you can see it's just uh, kind of, you know, um, moving like that up and down. And what we want to do is we want to be, we want to have it be able to uh, move a little bit more uh, back and forth. And that's where this uh, mystery constraint comes in. So let's take a closer look at the original horse right here. And let's take a look at this constraint the slider constraint. You can notice it has a target as Bisset, which is actually supposed to be base, just ignore that for now. And uh, so the target is Bisset, but let's find out what Bisset is first, or what base is. So let's find it on the uh, in the scene manager here. We have this object Bisset right here, and it's actually invisible, we can't see it right now. Uh, so if we make that visible, if we unhide it, you can see it's just a simple block. But if we go to our physics tab, and we go into our constraint manager, you can see this base has a hinge constraint. It's constrained by the slider, but it has a hinge constraint on it as well. So let's take a look at what exactly this does. This hinge constraint is behind it. This is the hinge constraint right here. And what this hinge constraint is doing is this, this hinge constraint is allowing this base to kind of rotate 
you know, along this axis right here. And what that's doing is the slider has actually targeted this base. So that's allowing the slider a little bit of freedom on this axis. So basically when the slider is going up and down, if the slider is targeting this base, this base is allowing a little bit of rotation from side to side. So in essence, it's allowing this shaft to move a little bit from each side. And if that's not clear uh, right now, it'll be clear in just a second when we apply it. Let's go ahead and uh, add in a, a base dummy object then. So let's go to uh, content, add in another box, and let's scale this box down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this box pretty close to the base of my, uh, of my gear here. Uh, we can just align it actually to the uh, shaft. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. And I'm going to move it up a little bit to about there and make it perpendicular to the shaft there as well. I think that should be okay right there. So we're going to place it right there. And obviously what I want to do next is constrain it into place. So let's take this base and add a hinge constraint onto it. And you can see the hinge constraint is right there relatively in the middle and that's fine and let's make sure that we set it to free and now what's going to happen is we're going to have this base you can see it kind of you know rotating back and forth and it's just kind of there's really nothing happening right now but what I want to do now is I actually want to take my slider constraint and I want to pick the target and I want to pick the target as my base and so now again once once you have a constraint that has a target the constraint target, uh, the movement of that constraint target is going to reflect, is going to determine the direction and the movement of your constraint as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens now. If I move, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that now we have this shaft that has a little bit more freedom to move thanks to this uh, base that we've added, this dummy base. And if I want to uh, have that disappear, I can always just select it and uh, just go over here onto the uh, scene tab and uh, you know, make it invisible. That's basically all we did in this uh, in this object right here. We'll just keep it there for now and I want to rename this actually from box 001. We'll call this uh, base dummy and press enter. Alright so now we have uh, everything set up uh, for our initial movement. Uh, everything's powered up. What I want to do is add in those uh, nice horse legs. So let's go ahead and create a couple of horse legs using our uh, boxes again. And uh, I always get these the wrong size. So let's go ahead and slim them down a little bit. And uh, maybe just scale it down on this axis a little bit. That should be fine. I'm going to align it to my box, uh, to the body actually. All right, so let's make sure we have it in the right position. I'm going to bring it a little forward a little bit. There we go. Oh, a little bit too much forward. All right, I think that looks like a reasonable size for the uh, horse's leg. Let's just rotate it and kind of put it into place here. All right, so this is the horse's rear leg. And I can just uh, control and click and create the lower section of the leg there. And let's rotate that a little bit. Move it up. I want to scale this down a little bit as well. There we go. I think that should be A-OK, -okay, the way it is. And then what I want to do is attach the uh, lower section of the leg to the top section. So I can just press the, uh, if I go here, press the I hotkey. We can go to the attach section, pick parent, and I'll pick the parent. And so let's take this and let's call this uh, R leg for rear leg. And maybe make it a little bit smaller. It seems a little bit, uh, a little bit big right there. Fatten it up a little bit there as well. I think that should be okay. All right, so this eh, maybe get a bit, a bit smaller as well. This horse's legs are pretty massive. All right, so I think that should be uh, okay. All right, so let's move this into place. There we go. Okay, and now logic would dictate then that we need to constrain this leg to the body. So let's add in our good old hinge constraint again here and make sure that's uh, kind of relatively in place right about there and that should be fine and instead of targeting the world we want it to target the body 
All right, so then we have our leg in place. Let's play back and see what happens here. Now we have this kind of flimsy leg just flopping about. Let's create a leg for the front uh, using the exact same procedure. Um, only in this case, we can actually just control and click and drag. Whoops, we need to have the uh, base selected. Take this control, click and drag, and move it over to this side, and we need to rotate it on the z-axis about 180. So keep in mind that this one has a constraint on it as well, because that constraint copied as well. So let's bring it up to about here and rotate it slightly. I think that should be uh, good. Uh, to about there, I think, is, is fine. And let's rename this uh, front leg. Uh, rather, F underscore leg to uh, indicate front leg. And if we go here to the hinge, you can see now the hinge uh, has automatically renamed the parent. So when we select that, let's pick the target as the as the body again. And now we have this kind of <laughs> floppy legs just flopping all over the place. So what we want to do is we want to actually control those legs uh, in a reasonable way. Now we can do that by you know limiting the uh, the range on the hinges here. I want to make sure actually that these hinges are set to free. So I'm going to select this hinge right here because that's an important part. See, we need to set this rotation as free right there. And on our front leg, we need to do the same thing as well. Select the hinge and set the rotation as free. So what I need to do is actually create a couple more shafts. And you can see that these, uh, these shafts right here, they're constrained by uh, two different objects. Um, if we go into our constraint manager down here, you can see they have two, two constraints. One is this hinge constraint down here, and the other one is up here. And if I rotate around, you can probably see that a little bit better. There we go. So it's constrained at this point, right below the initial uh, uh, thigh joint right there. It's constrained closer to the middle section of the thigh, and that's directly connected to this area down here. So that's another way we can constrain the legs on this horse. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this uh, medium sh middle shaft here. We can just uh, close the constraint manager for now. I'm just going to control and click and create ourselves another shaft right here. And we need to make sure that we rename this to, uh, let's call this rear, rear control. And we need to make sure we delete all those uh, constraints as well, since we don't want the same constraints. And make sure that the bottom of this is kind of reasonably uh, at the same as our uh, uh, base right there and rotate it to about there. I think that should be fine. Let's take a look. Maybe we need to make this a little bit smaller so we can use the R hot key to scale it down a little bit. And then let's do the same thing for the other side as well. So let's uh, control uh, and click and drag to create another shaft on this side. And then let's rotate that so it's kind of being placed right on the mid thigh of the rear leg there as well. And see that, that setup looks pretty similar uh, to what we have here. Maybe it's not exactly um, correct, but uh, I think we can even just take this and move it up a little bit and then uh, rotate it a little bit down as well. I think that should be reasonable right there. So the next item of business is to add some uh, hinge constraints onto the bottom of these uh, uh, helper shafts here. Oh, first of all, let's rename this uh, this one front front control. Okay, and add a hinge here. And this hinge is going to be uh, free, um, constrained to the world, so it's not going to move. And we can add a hinge right here as well. This hinge is going to be constrained to the world and set to free as well. But then what we want to do is we want to go back here and we want to add a couple more constraints on to the back. And so let's take a quick, uh, closer look at the back of this horse as well. Notice when I select this constraint right here, if I uh, select it, you can see the target is the leg, but the parent is the uh, connector right here, which is this, uh, which is this rod right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're going to add it to the uh, connector. So hinge constraint right about there. Let's just pin her right there. Let's try and keep that fairly uh, central. And move it down to about here. 
and then I want to make sure I pick the target as the leg right there and same thing for the other side we can even just uh, it's kind of really dull gray over here we can't really see we can use the forward slash key to rotate our light there we go I can see all right and move this uh, hinge constraint to right there and target the leg as well and let's take a look at what this will do uh, first of all let's make sure we uh, have these as uh, free as well hinge constraint right there set it to free and let's move to the front again here we go we can rotate our light back to the front right here that looks fine and let's play back and see what happens so now we have this uh, kind of galloping horse it's kind of just galloping along and it's a little bit uh, jittery but uh, you know if we uh, change it to by frame mode we should have a little bit of a better result and so there's our uh, our running horse and all we really need to do now um, to create four legs is we need to copy uh, these two sets of uh, legs to the other side. So let's take this one here, uh, this base right here, and this base right here, and let's control and copy to the other side. So now we have two sets of legs for our horse. And we can, you know, change the distances and everything like that later on. But again, keep in mind that when you uh, copy those over, again, you need to take those uh, constraints and uh, Pick the target as the body and take that uh, constraint down here. This constraint right here. Pick the target as the body. And let's see what will happen uh, just for fun when I uh, when I press uh, play right now. You can see those legs are still uh, flopping around like that because we haven't uh, had added those other constraints onto it uh, as well. So in this case, what I can do is I can simply just copy the constraints um, that we have on the end of these poles. So I'm going to select this constraint right here again, and we will just uh, copy it. So again, control and uh, click it. Make sure it's on the same uh, position on the x-axis right there. And we don't want it to target the world. Of course, we want it to target our rear leg right here. And the same thing with the rear constraint. We take this one right here, and we control, click, and copy. Notice this one's blue, this one's red. Pick target, pick the rear leg. And now we should be good to go with our uh, horse's body, at least. So let's press play. There we go. We have a galloping horse. His, maybe his, his rear legs can be a bit, uh, a bit uh, a different position, but I think we'll just leave it the way it is right now. And the final constraint we're going to do is the horse's face. So let's take a look at the horse's uh, face right here. We have this constraint right here in which the neck is constrained to the body. So it's a very similar procedure to the arms and the legs. So let's take that uh, again, content, create a, create a neck here. I'm not going to bother with the mane because our horse is, uh, our horse is a shaved mane. He's going bald. Um, or rather, maybe it was his choice. He just shaved his mane. Uh, let's, anyways, take this and align it to the body and bring it over here. Okay. And let's uh, bring it up so we can uh, kind of have a uh, neck right there. This horse has a long neck and it's thick. So he's a pretty strong dude. Uh, so let's just leave that right there. And we're going to constrain it to the body for the hinge. And to make sure that uh, box 001, let's uh, rename that. Uh, we don't really need to rename it at this point. We'll just remember that the neck is box 001. Pick target as the body. Bloop. Aw, now he's just a, a sad horse. So let's go ahead and add in a couple more things. We want to add in a uh, head for the horse. So that's the neck. And let's just control click. Uh, once we have the neck selected, control click. And add in this guy's uh, head. Rotate it a little bit, something like that. Maybe stretch it out a little bit more like that. Okay, this is a really uh, bush league uh, job I'm doing here of constructing this horse. Maybe his head is a little bit too uh, too heavy. Uh, you stretch it down a little bit. We don't want to spend too much time on the uh, on the head. I think the neck needs to be smaller. I went a little too bit, a little too far with his neck. All right. I think that looks okay. 
So now we have this constraint and take this constraint here, pick target, pick target as a neck. And so now he'll kind of have a flopping head like that. So we want to keep his head upright. So this brings us to our last and final uh, support right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this shaft right here and we're going to copy it and we're going to place it uh, right about uh, W. I'm going to place it right about here at uh, roughly the same height and we're going to just stretch it out using our uh, special magical powers of scaling and I want to make sure first of all that I select this hinge because I don't want it to be uh, rotating around in this case I'm going to select that hinge there and uh, delete it select that one as well and delete it and make sure we scale it up to about there and then we're going to go ahead and add in this fixed constraint right here and this is just a pure locking constraint we can just select that and uh, move it to where we want to move it about there and you can see that we don't have any options for uh, limit values uh, in our constraint section right here and we need to pick the target as the uh, horse's mouth and so there we go let's take a look at what we have going on here all right, so we have that kind of running horse. His neck is kind of breaking up a little bit there, but we can always, uh, you know, fix that by taking his head and moving it. Moving it. Oops, we have the constraint selected again. Taking the head, moving it back, something like that. Let's see what happens here. There we go. So there's our uh, our running horse. And if we want to have a race, we can, uh, you know, again take our gear and uh, rather the uh, constraint on the gear and go down here let's give it a velocity of like minus 15 let's make this guy gallop along so you can see woo now he's going a lot faster than this guy over here so that's basically it again um using constraints in combination can often be a little bit complicated but just remember that uh you know any constraint that is red is basically targeting uh something else so it's basically attached to anything else and i find for me personally the most important thing to remember is the difference between a, a parent and target Again, uh, if we select something like this uh, leg constraint right here, notice that uh, the green box uh, is highlighted in green. That's the target. The parent is in red. The parent is essentially what you are restricting, what you're causing limits on. That's the parent. The target is what your constraint is following. So this body, this leg is following the movement of the body. So wherever this body goes, the constraint is going as well. If it's targeted to the world, Obviously, the world is not moving. Um, figuratively, in this case, the world is not moving. Therefore, your constraint, its position in the scene, will not move. So again, if the target is the world, your constraint will not move. If your target is some other object in the scene that's moving, your constraint will move around, and the parent, which your constraint is constraining, will move along with it. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's probably the most important thing to remember. And again, you can also use dummy constraints to add additional uh, movement restrictions or allowances uh, on various uh, parts of your machine as well, like we did with this with this base dummy right here. And again, all of these poles right here, all of these uh, these poles and these constraints and dummies can all be made invisible. So all we have is this uh, is this you know white kind of horse galloping along by itself. So again, that's your uh, introduction, or rather, that's a more advanced uh, introduction to, uh, let's have the camera on here. That's a more uh, advanced introduction to how you can use uh, physics constraints to create uh, more advanced machines. And this one's actually pretty simple in the, in the, in the scheme of things. I've seen some much more complicated uh, physics uh, props and physics machines out there uh, by other developers in our marketplace and everything like that. So um, if you're really into machines and constructing things like that, it's a really fun thing to tackle, uh, you know, building machines with physics constraints, and you can, uh, you know, build your own and sell them on the marketplace or anything like that. So again, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hopefully you learned something about uh, creating machines in this tutorial.